Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Soul Ripper Jack, and I welcome you back to Shadowrun Hong Kong. Indeed, I did say yesterday that I would be posting Valkyria Chronicles. I was recording it, and I checked back at the recording. There was no video. Just my voice. And also, I'm not in the greatest of moods. Unable to download uh, Black Desert because of shitty internet connections. And yeah, it's difficult for me, so I'm using Shadowrun to sate my sanity. If I had any in the first place. Now, where we left off. Two Shadowrunners uh, brought us into, I think it's Kowloon City? I think we are in Kowloon City. But we have to get our sins destroyed, our sins burned. And we are in Hale, a, a place run by criminals. Hale, a makeshift boat city latched onto the Ka the Kai Tak riverfront. Oh, I completely missed that entirely. Well, some of you have seen it, so I don't need to worry about that. But this entire place is just run, is just run by criminals, thieves, and even shadow runners. And now, we have to get our asses saved by a woman known as Happy Chang. I think it's Happy Chang. I might, be, I might have been wrong. A massive steel security door is set into a bunker-like concrete wall. There are no sign or identification of what this place is. A battered intercon is encased in a cage of welded steel and armored glass. Grainy letters are barely readable on the screen. Chrome Alley, Medical Service. Chrome Alley, Medical Service and Mechanical Repair. Premises protected by deadly weapons and, if, and infectious diseases. <laughs> Press the buzzer. There's a crackle of static, and then a bur and a brusque voice answers. What do you want? In Cantonese, and the, the voice Cantonese is precise, but the accent sounds American. Is this a medical clinic? No, it's a chicken factory. What do you want? I need a cyber dog. Yeah, that's me. But listen, guy. I don't know you. I don't like people. I, I don't know. Who sent you? Oh, it's called Kindly Chang, not Happy Chang. <laughs> I'm friends with Isobel and Gobet. Yeah, those... Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah? Those two drag some real prizes out of, the, out of the river. You get Nigel to judge for you? I'll consider you a ta the time of day. Got it? You don't keep up with current events, do you? Nigel's dead. There's a long silence on the intercom. Crying shame, if that's true, and I saw that one coming. So you just washed up with Isobel and Gobbit, huh? You know what that, what that tells me? You're here today, and you'll be gone tomorrow. I'll keep my distance. Yeah, it's better that I don't interact with him for a while, so, so I'll just meet up with him later. Forget it. I'm going. Besides, it's good to just find out where everything is, so that will be the medical place where I'll be able to improve my cybernetics. Which I'm not, uh, I'm not too miffed about. But it is nice to see everything about here. Oh. Triad God. Uh, the thug looks, looks at you dead face. Despite his street clothes, he wears a high-tech earpiece. The entrance to the walled city is closed to foreigners. Alright. Who's this guy? He's a troll. Yeah, he's a troll. <laughs> Frederick Kai Cafe. That's close enough, friend. The club is members to The club is members and invites only. I suggest you move along. Gotcha. Yeah, better not mess with these people, because I can predict that all of them have guns, 
and all of them will shoot me. I may be able to kill them all with ease, but I'm not indestructible. But it's nice to just venture out and see what this place is like. And at least see what I can see. And wow, that is some shoddy ship repair. <laughs> the original name has been sloppily painted over with black paint. Newer but somewhat weathered characters have been painted in bold brush strokes that reads Bolt Hole. Huh. That's interesting. Name my ship Bolt Hole. <laughs> eh. Okay, well, what is this smuggler up to? Just off the docks, you spot a sea worn man with a smile that almost too wide for his head. His teeth shine white against the thick black brush of his beard. His clothes is a mir myriad of colors, patterns, and fabrics. A smattering of cultures draped across his body. If there's anything, if there's anything, he's clearly advertising his extent of his travels. You see something you like? His voice is coarse, like steel wool on your eardrums. Come and get it, because... Come and, come and get it, because now's your last chance. Everything's on sale. You won't find prizes like these anywhere else, my friend. Show me what you're selling. Okay, so he's selling weaponry. Okay. Problem is that with my character, he can't use weapons. I mean, I remember a time where I was able to use, like, shotguns and all that sort of stuff in my previous game. But, at this moment in time, I can't. Because I have just used Cyber Claws. That's all I can use at the moment. I'm just traveling about to see what there is. For some strange reason, it reminds me of Thailand, where you have these boats filled with all these types of spices and foods on their on their boats. Smaller ones, like not pass, not like these barges, but like smaller, like canoes. Well, and somewhat bigger. I can't really describe it, but it is nice. I have to admit. Right, let's go into the mahjong parlor. The swift winds mahjong parlor, filled with the stink of cigarette smoke, the incense click, instant click clank of mahjong tiles, and the grim faces of hardened gamblers. Oh wow! I forget mahjong is a game where you can gamble your stuff away. Never been a fan. Come in. We have a lot to talk about. Huh. <sighs> You can feel every eye in the room as you cross the mahjong parlor to the middle-aged woman sitting patiently at its end. The click-lack of ivory-colored tile stops. Hands stray beneath tablets into jacket pockets behind, pockets behind backs. The woman has the face of a prison guard and the demeanor of an inmate. Her salt and pepper hair pulled into an iron hard bun, and beneath it, two shiny black eyes offering nothing. Buttons soon on a doll. A nearly empty bottle of something foul rests on her on her mahjong table, nestled between a pair of dirty shot glasses. Tiny puddles of brown ling uh, tiny puddles of brown linger at their bottoms. Gobbet and Isabel stand on the other side of the ta of the table, heads lowered, shoulders slumped, hands clasped. They risk a frightened glance. They risk a frightened glance at you as you approach. <coughs> Kindly Cheng's voice is nasal and and rusty mean. My little pair of fuck ups here told me all about what happened at the docks. She dips a pinky into the shot glass and brings it to her mouth, removes it with a sharp smack. How two of my best runners had their heads pulled out, put out. 
how you needed protection, and now and how you needed to get uh, your identity swiped before you get your heads put out too. Potentially leading the heat to my front door, placing me and everyone in my employee in 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 my employee in danger. She fingers the rim of her glass. So wise. So very, very wise. The young shaman's eyes never left the floor. We're sorry, Auntie. We thought. Her eyes, her black eyes flash. You mustn't speak until you're spoken to, Gobbit, dear. The smile turns mean. And since you are... You are one short hair away from being dumped in the river chain to Isabel's corpse. I suggest you let your new friend here do the talking for a while. D does that make sense to you, dear? Her treco voice is back. Sweet, nasal, and grinding. Dark circle rings, Gorbett's arm. Dark circles ring. You know what? Dark circle rings Gobbit's armpits. Okay. Yes, Auntie. Can uh, Cheng inclines her head gently. Very good. You learn so quickly. <sighs> Better kept She pours another drink. Her cheeks are rosy, already flushed. Now, my darlings, I understand from little rat shit here that you came from Seattle to meet with my client, Mr. Black. Woo's your titans at the word client. But before you could find him, the HKPF started splattering gray matter everywhere, and everything went to shit. And now you need your sins burned so you can disappear before you end up Dead too, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Very good. Why don't we start with you telling me who you are? Call me Soul Ripper Jack. Oh, you've already chosen your street name. Oh, you've already chosen a street name. How persistent of you. Chang looks at you approvingly. Soul Ripper Jack. It's a good name. Has real character. She flutters her eyelashes at you. Now, what's your real name? I mean, do you want me to erase your identities? Don't, don't you, dear? I'll need to know who you are first. Alexander. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Alexander, I guess... That's what you call me as a street samurai. Alexander, I guess that's you'd, that you'd call me as a street samurai. She rests her head on her chin on her hand. Ah, yes, you're from Seattle. Street samurai isn't something we say here in Hong Kong. We prefer street soldier. And how did you become a street soldier, S Alexander? I picked it up young. I've been in the cooler for a few. Wu's brow furrows as he shakes his head. Still can't believe it. Kindly Chang whips her head up towards Wu. A nasty retort already on her lips. But then she stops. Sticks out her lower lip and then sizes, sizes him up. She turns to her lieutenant. Well, yeah, lieutenant. Standing behind her, nodding her, nodding her approval. It looks like the gun show is in town. What's your name, gun show? Wu focus remains straight, remains straight headed, straight ahead. Duncan Wu, I'm a cop, a lone star. I hear there were some fresh corpses around the docks tonight. Smugglers, I believe. Didn't sound like the Hong Kong police when I heard about it. 
You're doing, Duncan Wu? Wu's eyes remain fixed on the spot on the wall behind her. He smolders. I identified myself as Lone Star, but they didn't but they wouldn't stand down. They had weapons. It was self defense. She puckers her lips at him, her voice sings song. I don't care, sweetie. They weren't my people. But now I know you're a life taker, Mr. Gunshow. You and your friend here. She begins arranging mahjong tiles on the table in front of her. But now I'm curious. Why are you meeting Raymond Black on the docks tonight? <coughs> Sorry. Raymond Black is our foster father. That makes her pause. Cheng lifts her bottle and swir of swill and her and eyes the label connecting the dots in, in her head. Interesting. A look of disgust passes over her face. Sorry, kids, but he was looking like shit when I saw him. I saw him. Eyes half open, dark circles around them, dragging his feet. The whole bit. She tisks in displeasure. Your foster daddy was in a bad place. Sounds like he wasn't sleeping. Could be. From what he said, it sounded like he was having nightmares. He would stop in the middle of a sentence and mutter something to himself. One time it was about walls breathing or something. Another time it was about teeth. Thousands of teeth. Possibly a dragon. <laughs> I remember him drifting off into near drifting off near the end of our meeting. It looked like he was off somewhere else in his head. He said I left prosperity in there. Then Nightjar put his hand on Mr. Black's shoulder, asked him why he wanted to go to the walled city so badly. That seemed to bring him back. When he when your old man opened his eyes, they were full of tears. Then he muttered something else I couldn't make out. She pours herself another shot, tosses it back, and rubs her belly. Your daddy got really irritating after a while. I can imagine. <laughs> she grabs a long, slim cigar from the pack of her mahjong table, lights it. All right, let's get to it. She exhales and points two fingers at you and Wu. You two need your sins burned, and you need them burned fast. Hong Kong dragnets are bad news. When they, when they roll, they roll in force. Armored personnel carriers, heavy armor, heavy weapons, sorcerers, the whole thing. And they aren't coming to arrest you. She folds her arms across her chest. A thin cigar bobs in her mouth as she speaks. The good news is, I can help you within the wave of my hand. I can make your sins disappear. But you need to understand, my darlings, is that what you're asking is asking for is not a simple request. Burning a sin isn't just deleting a number. It's wiping all reference to that number from all the world's largest databases. It's masking your mugshot in the facial recognition database, so that the first camera you walk past doesn't bring them down like a ton of bricks. It's covering your fucking tracks, so the act of burning your sin doesn't lead them right to us. It requires contracts in numerous corporations the, and the UCAS government. The s smoke rolls out of the triad boss's nose. It requires someone like me. <coughs> Therefore, I need to make a choice. She takes another drag on her cigar and gently places her palm flat on the table. Do I kill you and dispose of your bodies before the cops come in looking for you? Or do I help you burn your sins? And Etiquette Shadowrunner. You may want to think about your rep as a fixer. Two of your runners were taken down by cops, and you have no idea why. 
Cheng rests her chin on her hand again, and smiles coldly at you. So clever, so so clever. Her chin stays on her hand, but her eyes look past you, surveying the yellow lotus soldiers in the room. Yes, I have been placed in a delicate situation, haven't I? Regardless, that, regardless that the situation, whether you are alive or you're sucking dirt. She stares at you for a long moment, chin still on hand, thinking. Taps, taps her ash on the floor without taking eyes off of you. A low, reluctant growl rumbles somewhere beneath her throat. You live. You're clever, and I like that. I'll put your sins in to the torch. However, I'll need to call in several valuable favors within my network to do it. And those favors do not come cheap. You will owe me. What do you want us to do? I want you to deliver a message for me. To a, to a business associate in the walled city. The Yellow Lotus has a strong presence inside, Alexander. Isabel can tell you all about it. Can't you, dear? Isabel grew up in the walled city. Isabel's eyes remained lowered. They collect taxes from for the corporation, extort protection money from shopkeepers, run dr drugs, guns, people... They hurt people. We do those things, yes. But to be fair, we also operate the walled city's black market. You might not be alive today if it weren't for the lifeline that we provide. Isabel clamps up tight. Cheng picks up a mahjong tile and turns it with her fingers. There's a red pole, a sort of enforcer, yes? On the inside, his name is Strangler Bao. Bao is a strong man, a good soldier, but he has forgotten his place. You need to remind him. Want us to make... Want us to make an example of him? Did I say that? Did I say I want you to make an example of him? No. I... I want you to deliver a message. She tosses you a memory stick. Bring this to him in my name, and remember that Bao's men are my men. By right, they should all be serving me. Killing them would be a waste of resources. I have no use for dead soldiers. She turns to Gobert and Isabel. One of you will go with these two Westerners to the walled city, help locate Bao, and show them the ropes. The other will remain here with me. I have several menial and degrading tasks that I need to do around the establishment. No matter who goes and who stays, you'll both pay for bringing, bringing an APB to my doorstep. Yes, auntie. Yes, auntie. Now, I'm going to find out who ordered a hit on Nightjar and do some dentistry on him with power tools. She closes her eyes and smiles with pleasure. That boy was my favorite. He sang to me sometimes. She opens her eyes again and sneers. That other one, I don't care about. Gutshot was an asshole. She turns away and waves you off with the back of her hand. That will be all, my darlings. Return to me when you are done. One last question, auntie. She keeps her back to you, but you can tell she's making eye contact with her lieutenant. Why not? Apparently I'm feeling generous today. What do you think happened to Raymond and got your shadow runners killed? Cheng's voice is small. I don't know. Honestly, that is the best description you can give to a person. I don't know. <laughs> right. Oh, thankfully, I didn't get uh, anyone killed in that. 
And I got three karma from it. Huzzah. Right. Mm. Wait, before I go anywhere, I need to check on something. No, I can't talk to uh, Gobbit or Isobel. Right, let's get towards the... Ooh, what's this? Whoa, 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 you're not going that far. The encirculation of these heavy wires is cracked. They buzz and crackle occasionally as a stray... Ah, fuck. Never expected them to go that fast, the text. Yeah, that's... I once tried to draw this... Tried to draw this place. Nigh impossible. End combosses to life. You again. I thought I told you to fuck off. I'm doing a job for kindly. A job for kindly, huh? You and every other hood in Hong Kong. Come back if you have some wheels around here. Otherwise, fuck off. And there's another burst of static and the intercom goes dead. Hmm. He ain't a fat he ain't a happy fellow. Right, try it, God. <coughs> Pardon me. The thug taps his earpiece, gest gestures with his head. Auntie Cheng said that you be you'd be coming. You can pass. Uh-huh. Right, time to enter the walled city. When traveling with to new mission your lo locations you will be able to choose which members of your team to bring and modify their loadout for the run. When members of your team become permanently in incapacitated on a mission, they'll be automatically extracted for emergency medical care, and they'll be patched up and ready to for action the next time you return to return to Heioi. Avoid the loss of firepower by always carrying some dock wagon trauma kits into the field. That is true. Right. I wonder... I'll bring her since she knows the place. Since she knows the walled city. It will be an advantage for me. Right. Time to take a nice little trip down the walled city. <clears throat> The City of Darkness Kowloon Walled City The most densely populated spot on Earth, nearly 40,000 people crammed into seven acres of chaos, poverty and disease and vice. A self-contained city that collects no taxes and provides no city services. Stagnant water sits in temporary wells, trash lies piled on roofs for, control, for controlled burns, and provide structures lean dangerously over populated areas. This is an ideal breeding ground for all manner of illicit trade. Drugs, gambling, black market trade, metahuman tra meta human trafficking, and everything in between. The only law is triad law. And now you need to enter this septic system of a city, find a triad enforcer named Strangler Bao. And deliver a message from Kindly Cheng. <laughs> yeah, I don't have gear, items, or spells. Since I'm just full-on... Yeah, I'm just a full-on melee. Which I can predict is not going to end well. Unless I'm able to just find a way to uh, deal with it somehow. Unspend karma. Yeah. I'll let's see if I if I have some if I can spend it somewhere. Yeah, there's that sort of stuff. Quickness. Yeah, I could boost my agility. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll boost my dodge. <coughs> Foul oily water rains down from above. Mixes with the filth and the filth and official and awful s what mixes with the filth and awful and swill of the streets. 
turn it into a flowing slurry of un unrecognizable sewage. In the distance, the sounds of back alley activity add to the ambience of your arrival. Breaking glass, crackling hisses of garbage, of garbage fire, faint screams of terror punctuated punctuated by local gunshots, sex and business and violence and misery blended into one. Wu winces at the stink, waves his hand in front of his face. Raymond said that prosperity is in the walled city, but I don't see it. Why the hell would he want to set foot in this place? Who knows? He'd have to be insane to travel to the walled city. As I think we said, it was the worst slum in the Eastern Hemisphere. Maybe the worst in the world. She does her best to suppress a shudder. Can't... Can't keep the dread from creeping into her voice. I can't believe I grew up here. Sorry, sorry to have to drag you back. Isabel looks around her and closes, looks around her, closes her eyes. You could have, you couldn't have brought Goblet, and you couldn't have brought Goblet instead. I would have been cool with that. She peers up at the catwalk and the night sky bridges that connect the rotting tenement, sagging architecture sagging architecture. Frowning, she points a spot in the distance. There was the market over there when I was a kid. Might not be a bad place to start. I thought you knew where to find Strangler Bow. I do. We need to get into the Lotus Den. That's what Bow calls the little island of control he has carved out himself there. It's a stupid name, but it's stuck. He'll have guards posted every, at every entrance, but we might be able to find a way around them through the market. That's what Kindly, what Kindly would prefer. They probably aren't expecting anyone to come in, but come in force. We can't kick the door, drop the guards, hand over the message, and get the hell out. Kindly doesn't want them dead. She just wants them to remember where their loyalties lie. It's tough to remember much of anything when you got a bullet in your head. I mean, we could kill them if you really wanted to. Technically, Bao is the only one that has to live. But I'd rather keep Auntie Cheng happy than piss her off again. We may need kindly Cheng, but she doesn't owe her, own us. Hmm. That'll be up to them. If they don't try and kill us, they live. Got it? Let's get it done. Right. I am now at the 30 mark. And I will continue this later on. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Soul Ripper Jack, and this has been Shadowrun Hong Kong. I will return to this tomorrow, and hopefully a lot of things would have changed by then. I bid you all a good day, and safe travel.